Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Here today we're actually going to be covering Eclipse, one of the best, if not the best, Lennox player in NA on another exciting game with Amir. How are you doing today, Amir? I am doing amazing. Getting to see Eclipse play is uh, very fun, but I do see that he's not playing one of his uh, patented builds of either the blink or strider on lennox he's actually playing the uh force field as i think maybe he's realized his team needs a bit more tankiness this game yeah for sure i mean he has a rio so he definitely has that front to back kind of angle with the camillo on his team i mean he could have definitely played the strider to go for a catch as well as the blink but i think he's gonna play more towards the rio instead and play it a little bit slower so that force field makes sense the other thing too is i I'm excited to watch some Eclipse. Eclipse has been gone, I believe, for like a month, month and a half. So we haven't really ha been able to see him in games or any plays. So kind of excited to see where he's at now. Is I think he's now been back for probably about a week. Uh, yeah, he I know took a bit of a trip or a vacation. And seeing him back on the uh, Felix and the Lennox has been really refreshing. Because we had a bit of a Lennox, uh, like lennox meta for a bit in na where everyone was playing lennox playing blink and i'm pretty sure eclipse was gone for the entire thing which was uh very unfortunate because we didn't see the lennox goat playing during the lennox meta i know but truly he's kind of bringing it back on his own yeah absolutely maybe he'll bring it back here but now for anyone that doesn't know how lennox works let's just go over the kit real quick here first is the passive bait and tackle we'll talk about the main part of uh, of the passive which is tackle so every 18 seconds if lennox hits a test subject with a basic attack or deals skill damage she'll gain a shield her q recoil allows her to whip a circle around her dealing damage to enemies and she deals extra damage to enemies hit by the edge as well as when she hits an enemy she gains a stack reducing the cooldown of her q per stack up to two stacks next is snake bite Lennox sends a whip flying, dealing damage, and dragging enemy in front of her. This is like a blitzcrank hook. It's pulling people in, grabbing people, pulling them towards her at a set distance. And then next is her E whiplash. This allows her to sweep and flay a target around her, either pu pushing them away or pulling them towards her, uh, depending on which direction she uses the skill. And lastly is a blue viper. So Lennox marks a spot in with a shape of an X, dealing damage and applying an effect effect called blue viper for four seconds which allows enemies to take true damage depending on how far they move and this deals and that deals true damage based on movement yeah and uh all thing with the blue viper as well is that uh each pick of blue viper uh her swinging her whip twice uh applies its own effect uh so the first one applies one effect of blue viper and then the second one will apply another one on top meaning that you actually take more damage if you take both hits of Lennox Whip when she presses that ultimate. Yeah, which is really, really strong. So you always want to try and aim those. One thing that I've learned about Lennox when I've been trying to pick her up, I've tried to pick up this character a couple times, still not good at it. I was never good at flays or hook kind of characters. So really struggle with those mechanics. But one of the things that a lot of Lennox use for a trick to get their main damage output out is when they hook someone with their w it does a set distance so if you know that distance you can immediately press your alt at the location that they're going to land and it will guarantee the double mark of the target yeah it's uh something that's come a long way as lennox used to be able to do this with what was previously known as whip skill um but now her just having it on w it's very useful just making sure you can get this double whip as I think it does upwards to 50 true damage every, I don't remember the amount of distance you have, to, have to travel, but every time it tick, um, which is a lot of true damage as that thing can start doing like upwards to 500 true damage to you just because you decided to walk around. Absolutely. Plus the factor that, that it makes it so that when you're walking around, it's such a powerful tool because you can easily just mark a target that you want your team to kill and then as we have that they basically can't run away if they try to run away they die if they don't try to run away they die right as this just happened to gram gram there just got hit by the whip skill you know got marked got punished for kiting got punished for not kiting 
Yeah, it's uh, it's very hard because every character wants to move, especially when you have something like the <laughs> the melee Camillo jumping on you. It's like, what do you do? I either stand here and take damage, or I run away and I take damage. So, no matter what, as long as you're hitting it, you are get you're getting some sort of value. It was an interesting piece. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, now it looks like we actually get the tree really good considering that it was looking kind of bad as the team was split at the beginning of night one. But because they waited, they got the day scan, they saw no one in the hotel, took that initiative, the TP together, get there onto the objective and ended up winning out the brawl. Yeah, I also wonder what we're going to do with this tree as yeah, we're still holding on to it, getting a meteorite, maybe force core into our chest piece i assume guardian suit coming out early as it's one of the honestly one of the better items for tanks right now yeah Getting a lot of this damage reduction out it's like for an item that it feels too good oh actually we're going ghost bride's dress getting some of that uh defense reduction for our opponent making uh sure that they're a bit squishier making our team hit a bit harder for sure i think that's actually a really really strong tank offensive tank item it's going to enable both the teammates to do a lot. And Lennox has a lot of tools to keep people inside that little cloud. So definitely won't be surprised if we see a lot of like pull-ins into like a flay backwards and just keeping someone locked down as long as possible for the team to just completely annihilate them. Yeah, it looks like we're getting this battle zone for free. And I don't think we're in range to contest two objectives. So it'll so probably be just be free battle zone into beach, go and get those bears. Um, but I actually didn't see who was taking... Okay, we're giving the objective over to Camilla. I was wondering who was going to grab it, if we're going to take something for ourselves, as we have a few tank items we can slam. I, myself, am not the biggest fan of, uh, Lennox taking a majority of tree items, as most people on tanks with trees go, uh, Burning Heart or Blazing Dress, and I don't really like playing those ranges as Lennox bit too close range when I'm a bit more of a range tank um, but yeah we're getting the mithril and I think we gave it over to our Camillo get him some more items and uh, just keep playing it out from here as we don't need too many items early well exactly plus as a tank I don't think we ever want to prior the tank I'm surprised that the Rio didn't get prior though I would have expected the Rio to take an item there as we do actually have a fight happening we do actually yeah again aggressive flays we actually flame the Tia back in Again, just not too worried, not trying to peel, more so just trying to keep the enemies in place. We're very confident that we can win these fights. Again, full health, only our Camillo going down at this point. As I think Rio and uh, Lennox have... Oh my gosh, what a wonderful pull in. And that's a team elimination. Yeah. There's so much damage coming out of this Lennox as well. We're not just running in and standing there looking pretty. We're running in, hitting three people with our Q, hitting two people with our E, pushing people back into our team. And I think it just makes it really scary for our opponents to start playing when, you know, their one of their primary DPS is being pushed into our team. Now their two frontliners are trying to run back to help. And instead of having to peel, we're just dragging their frontliners back to us. Well, exactly. And it's really, really impressive to know not to panic your abilities. Because I can guarantee a lot of Lennox there would have definitely panic flayed backwards, trying to send them back, but Eclipse very confident that they can win. Rio was perfectly safe. There was no more tools or resources. They put a lot onto the Camillo, pulling them back in so that they can turn the fight onto them and yeah, just deal dish out so much damage and allow their the team to completely fully enableize that wipe. Yeah, I think it's also very nice that uh in a lot of these fights, we just see him walking, like, continuously walking forward. It's just, my opponents are, aren't are allowed to come at my my teammate because I'm going to be in their backline, annoying their main carry, making sure that their main source of damage has to hit Eclipse instead of hitting their main, sort of, main source of damage themselves. Well, exactly. Well, actually, the crazy thing about that was, is that he was full HP. No one hit him once. He was, he was able to walk forward, be around all of them, hit multiple three hits, but not a single person touched him. By the time Camilla went down and Tia ulted, he was still full HP. Oh, we're actually going to see a bit of a misplay from the Aiden over here. But also, Eclipse hit a double ult here. So 
as uh, as the Aiden tries to run away. He's just taking so much damage, but now we're just going to keep hitting these Qs, try and deny the Jackie away onto our Rio, and I think we're probably just going to chase uh, the Alex in now. Yeah, I think we might be able to still catch him. He's going to be in the corner here. Does Eclipse notice it? Oh, no, the vision gap. Yeah, I think that the Alex will now get out as that character has a bit too much mobility and can just keep running away. One of the best riders in the game right now. For sure. And and uh, also, can we talk about as well with Eclipse there? When he did that full combo on Aiden, we really saw the true combos that we were talking about where he was able to flay him back, then hooked him so that he guaranteed the hook into the same spot into immediately alting so that he got the double mark. And then that forced Aiden, when he jumped away, to not be able to move as much. He actually had to stop for a moment and almost ended up dying for it. Yeah, a nice little thing with the Lennox that you can do is, as you said, use the uh, use the Flay first, use her E, and then combo her E into her W, and don't just open up with that hook. As you see, they can just start sidestepping it, playing around it, and dodging it, but we actually... We'll see so much damage coming out to the Rio. We didn't realize that the Alex walked into the bush. But uh, yeah, I think he sadly will be getting caught out here as we still have a decent amount of damage left in the <laughs> the two of us being Camillo and uh, Lennox. No, for sure. And again, yeah, I mean, really good combo there from Alex as a rat taking down the Rio for a trade. Minus 250 for his team, but hey, still not bad. Got a little bit of RP. But again, it's just, it's so clean watching Eclipse land that combo every time. The second that uh, Alex got hooked, it was over for him because he immediately got hit by the ultimate. And it just means he can't get away. He's just done for. Yeah, and we do see another four score coming out. I don't, yeah, our Rio doesn't want it. And our Camilla's already kind of set up. So it looks like we will be going into the solar system miniature, which is a very nice and funny item as it is just stats the item giving... 15 defense and 600 health when you're at level 20. It is a lot of tank stats. Yeah, this is an insanely statted piece here with 3.3k HP already. So much health. I'm actually just uh, curious here. If we jump over, I mean, 3.2k on this Lennox here. So not, not a whole lot more, but 200 extra. Yeah, but this is still, uh, we're still not level 20, where on average, I think this item gets like 300 more health than other tank items, or than other tank arm slots when you hit level 20, um, which can mean a lot when you also have a lot of defense, as we actually do get Crusader's Helm coming out for our headpiece, meaning that we're good on CDR, probably just going to transition those boots into, I assume, uh, Wild Walkers because we do want that CDR on the boot slot, and we don't need attack power. Um, and we also don't really need amp, as Lanox isn't the most amp-scaling character. Yeah, plus, I mean, this weapon is so overstated. Like, I this is probably the best reason to run a whip tank, is that whip tanks are naturally doing a lot of AoE. This is a great heal cut weapon, super cheap, and you almost never, ever need to upgrade it. So super, super efficient that way. And oh my, instantly yeah, just walks tank, up, doesn't care, only. goes right for that flay, fully just set up. Like, again, we're not, we're not even pressing W yet. We, we literally just walked up and didn't care, only using our Q and E for that entire time. Yeah, a lot of what we need to do isn't even use this hook. Um, like, we can just pressure them, use our body. Like, that, that's what we're there for. We are a tank. We hold a lot of pressure in just walking at people. But now we see two people try to walk through us and just go for our carry. And we're just using this flay to make sure we push them back consistently. Sadly, the plant is going to knock us away from our carry. So we can't help too much more. But they're able to get out. Um, I just realized that we are actually tax skill 3. Which means that we're getting this bonus movement speed um, through the combo of uh, heavy knee pads and barrier or force field 3. Because... With Force Field 3, we get bonus movement speed while we have a shield, and Heavy Knee Pads gives us a shield that is constantly on. So we are permanently getting this bonus movement speed until this shield is broken. And we're actually really one second left on our Rio, getting a bit close. 
Yeah, that right. was extremely close. Out. But unfortunately, they didn't have enough to buy back, so they did have to take that play. I mean, I don't think they would have made the timer if they tried to buy back, so it definitely works out for them. The other thing that's really, really crazy is like their positioning was really well in that last fight, like you mentioned. Really had Lennox positioned pretty well, trying to keep the play, and the Rio repositioning after they walked past the, uh, the Lennox the first time, making sure that Eclipse could get that extra flay to keep them away. Sadly, the Blast Cone kind of screwing over the fight for them, but it looked like a lot of third parties, and Eclipse kind of realized that immediately that there's no way for him to save the fight the second that he got blasted away and just opted to try and get the team back together. Yeah, it's always better just take the uh, take the minus credits and play for your revives. Don't worry about making that hero play. Sometimes it's beneficial, but a lot of the time it just ends up with you running it down and uh, maybe your team ends up typing some uh, not nice words at the end of the game. No, for sure. Yeah. And hey, we got a Meteor, so we won our whip upgrade. Again, this whip's not bad, but it's not... It's not as crazy as you'd think. It's just a little bit of extra amp, whereas you can just stay on the purple whip and it's fine, but there's no there's no need. No one else needs any items and we had it there. We might as well slam it. And I think we're about to get a free third party now that we just TP'd in. Yeah, we actually have such a big fight going on here. This might just end the game where... Actually, no, sorry. We have one team that is not even close to this fight, but we're able to pick up one kill. Uh, we might just go down and look for the... Uh, the two stragglers that are running down i don't know if this man will, or oh aiden actually does get the tp out oh he was hoping for a better tp maybe look for the revive onto the teammate oh and wow this is just the tp goat where he's just able to get the tp that denies them the revive perfectly did what the aiden wishes he could have done oh and looking for that hook into the alt combo where he knows the the range perfectly he knows exactly what he needs to do and uh you can see him just putting it in there, even though the Aiden uses the parry and denies it. It's, uh, it's nice to see. He just knows it, got it on lock, and uh, doesn't need to wait to see the body hit the floor. Well, exactly. I think that I think that's actually... I know it missed there, but I think that gives you the most clearest clarity of understanding how he's playing this game. As soon as he is confident that that hook is going to land, he is already sending the alt out to guarantee the hit. Because if you, if you wait then you give the enemy an opportunity to dodge your ultimate and you don't want that to happen. Yeah, and sadly, Jackie walking out a bit too early and getting caught. I don't think we're going to see anything come out. don't think they want to chase through red. But they might find Jackie up here. Um, Oh, our Jackie actually will go all the way around, taking the long route. Hopefully has enough timer to make it up. But Def they will walk into play. the other team here now. But now um, they've got another fight happening. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Is they're going to try and fully go on to the Rio. Once again, Rio just kind of getting juggled around. But great plays coming in from Eclipse. Gets the bleeds. Again, this is another really good way to use that ultimate. Putting that damage on them. It punishes them for chasing the Rio. As they're going to just take damage. True damage at that. While they're chasing. And also going to take damage from the Rio as they're being hunted. Oh, what a Oh what my a god. Hug. That is such a pullback all the way back over the wall and i think that they're just gonna get the rio back up and eclipse playing that fight so well walking up making sure that he's a priority target for a while and then the second that the darko is just deciding to pull him out of the fight just keep walking towards your team we don't have to take that 1v1 completely we can keep using cues keep walking at our team but we're gonna see bianca using the ult the second we see the ult come out make sure that we deny the e by using our flay using it again to cancel bianca's <laughs> coffin and then just pulling everyone back making sure that no one has the ability to do anything the fight just looks so smooth eclipse makes this look so easy i swear every fight like obviously rio is the top priority and i mean our rio is playing incredibly well in this game showing that you know because she's creating a lot of space. But Eclipse is just running around these entire fights, playing perfect CC, locking people down, preventing them from being able to do basically anything. And it's just, it's crazy to watch uh, of someone that has truly mastered Lennox in play. Yeah, something that goes very unnoticed for a lot of players is uh, what their tanks are doing for them. Where in this game, I've just seen Eclipse keep making so much space where... It doesn't, at some points, it doesn't even matter where his Rio's positioning because he's just made infinite space around them. Rio can start walking all the way up if she really wanted to, and it wouldn't matter. 
exactly and plus on top of that is that even when there's opportunities where he can't create space for his his rio you know the team has gotten on top of her and stuff and you know the, sp the space is lost he does everything possible to try and give that space back whether it be pulling them back putting his true damage on them so that they get punished for chasing uh, just putting out a bunch of damage pressure again always just trying to play around his team not really ignoring them trying to go on like a back line or anything like that yeah i think a lot of people forget that lennox isn't just a tank she has a lot of damage and while it might not be too noticeable a lot of her damage is just locked behind hitting this double ol because getting all of this true damage when your tank or when their frontliners are trying to chase your carry or their backliners are trying to run away from your team it it just scares everyone and they either have to start taking all of this damage or just walk back into your team and stand still exactly yeah and you definitely don't want to be standing still as a frontline because that just means that rio gets the freest day of her life <laughs> yeah but we will be seeing the final fight come out here i think we're trying to get vision of the darko because we haven't actually seen them but um gonna get a bit of free damage over to the enemy lennox their force field's gonna be forced now and i think as yeah we're just trying to deny this darko as i think he's the only real person that has the ability to deny like to disrupt this fight oh my yeah darko and darko can't play the game it, it must feel so bad because our lennox is just permanently denying him the ability to go in and then again rooted the second he jumps in yeah lennox single-handedly made it so that that entire team could not play the game now i don't think that last team had that great of a comp to begin with but their obvious objective was to die of the rio kill the rio turn the fight into a 2v3 and they could not get near rio whatsoever eclipse dominating that game and creating so much space and that is truly how you carry on a tank like lennox i hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you in the next one